The Kamchatka Peninsula was hit by an 8.8 .8 magnitude earthquake, one of the strongest ever recorded, which also caused tsunami waves in various Pacific countries. At the moment, fortunately, no fatalities have been reported, but many people have been injured. But what exactly happened? We are in Russia, off the coast of the Kamchatka Peninsula. Just a week ago, five strong earthquakes had already been recorded off its shores, the strongest of which had a magnitude of 7.4. In that case, however, no significant damage was reported and the tsunami warning was lifted shortly thereafter. Today, however, at 11.24 a.m. local time, a violent earthquake with a magnitude of 8.8 .8 struck about 136 kilometers from the coast and at a depth of just 20.7 kilometers. I say just because 20 kilometers might seem like a lot, but actually, keep in mind that there are earthquakes that occur hundreds and hundreds of kilometers deep. And what's the point? When earthquakes are this shallow, the rock isn't able to absorb all their energy, so they're felt quite strongly even at the surface. In fact, in Kamchatka the earthquake caused significant damage to buildings. Among these was even a nursery school, which collapsed shortly after the first tremor. According to Russian authorities, there are numerous injured, although at the time we're recording this content, the total number of people involved is still unclear. After the first tremor, several others followed, with magnitudes ranging from 5.3 to 6.9 and depths between 10 and 30 kilometers. So, this is a seismic sequence which, unlike the seismic swarms we often hear about, consists of one main shock followed by aftershocks of lower magnitude. But the problem isn't just the earthquake itself, but also the tsunami warning that followed. In fact, when earthquakes occur out at sea, what happens is that a step forms on the seabed, which might measure just a few millimeters, or, in the case of more violent earthquakes like this one, can even reach several meters. And what does this step do? It moves the entire column of water above it, creating waves that can reach several meters in height and then crash onto the coasts. Also because these waves spread in every direction. So in today's case, all the countries facing the Pacific are potentially at risk. In many cases, it must be said, the tsunami warning is issued and then withdrawn after a few hours, fortunately. But in this case, the waves have already hit some countries like Russia, Japan, and the United States, obviously with varying heights. Just think, the tsunami waves started to arrive right after the quake, mainly hitting the district of Severokurilsk at the southern tip of the Kamchatka Peninsula. Here, just this morning, a wave about 5 meters high was recorded. A state of emergency was declared in the district after the water also damaged several industrial infrastructures. For this very reason, the 2,500 residents were immediately evacuated. Several waves of 3 to 4 meters were also recorded in the Elizovsky district, still in Kamchatka. As mentioned, the tsunami risk isn't limited to Russia. In fact, tsunami waves also reached Hawaii this morning. From Ihua, on Oahu's northern coast, waves of about 1.5 meters were recorded. In Japan, on the other hand, Evacuation orders were sent to more than 1.9 million people in 21 different prefectures. The first tsunami waves are already hitting many parts of the eastern coast, from the northernmost island, Hokkaido, all the way to the main island of Honshu, even near the Tokyo metropolitan area. For now, however, the waves measure up to 60 centimeters, so well below the 3 meters initially forecast. The tsunami warning has therefore been issued for the entire Pacific area, from the island of Guam to Alaska, Ecuador, and the entire American West Coast. All right, we've given an overview of what happened. At this point, it's important to understand what caused this earthquake geologically. To do that, let's go to the board. What you see here is a map created by the USGS, which is the United States agency responsible for monitoring earthquakes, not only in the US, but around the world. Specifically, we can see that there are a lot of dots. These represent all the earthquakes that have occurred in the area over the past few decades. This, just to be clear, is the Kamchatka Peninsula we're talking about. The darker colored dots indicate the deeper earthquakes, like these ones, while the lighter colored ones show the more shallow earthquakes. What also changes is the size of the dot. So, 
The bigger these dots are, the higher the magnitude associated with that specific earthquake. In fact, if we look, all these large dots have very high magnitude values. See? 8.1, 8.3, 8.1, and so on. And today's is here, where there's this red star, which is the 8.71, actually 8.8, .8, since it was updated, of 2025. If we look even more closely, all these earthquakes aren't arranged randomly, but are located along this black line. See, so, this one, what is this line? It marks the boundary between two tectonic plates, specifically between the Pacific Plate and the North American Plate. It shows the subduction between these two plates, so between the North American Plate and the Pacific Plate. Now I'll show you another image that might be even clearer. This is a hypothetical cross-section of subduction. Just to be clear, here we have our North American Plate, and here we have the Pacific Plate, which is descending beneath the North American Plate. As this plate descends, energy gradually builds up, and when this energy is released, it can cause very powerful earthquakes. The more energy that accumulates, the more violent the earthquake will be. Also, when this plate descends, what does it do? It heats up. The deeper it goes, temperatures rise, causing partial melting. So the molten material tends to rise back up, and this also gives rise to volcanoes. In fact, now I'll show you something. If we look at the Pacific Ocean on a large scale, we see this whole area marked in red, which is called the Pacific Ring of Fire. In this area, there is the highest concentration of volcanoes and earthquakes in the world. Just to be clear, today's earthquake occurred roughly in this area. But what's interesting is that if we look at the five strongest earthquakes in history, we'll notice that they're all in this belt. Let me show you. Here they are. I've numbered them from one to five, from the strongest to the least strong in the top five. We've got one in South America, one in Alaska, here in Southeast Asia, again in Japan, and then in Kamchatka. So these are the five strongest recorded earthquakes in history, and they're all located along the Pacific Ring of Fire. Careful! Before wrapping up, I want to make one thing clear. Today's earthquake is not connected to other earthquakes in other parts of the world. Let me explain better. Earthquakes are natural events, and the fact that such a violent earthquake occurred in Russia has nothing to do, for example, with the earthquakes that have hit Guatemala in recent hours. Similarly, if there were to be a tremor in Europe or Italy in the coming days, it wouldn't be connected to the one in Kamchatka. I want to make this clear because, often online, someone suggests connections between earthquakes in areas that are even thousands of kilometers apart. And it's important to remember that these are natural phenomena that are not directly related to each other. Alright guys, thanks for sticking with me up to this point. We'll see each other again in the next video,